already answered uh, Terrier 55 Stepney. Right, Mallard Fan 62. Do you have plans to buy any Hornby or Batman Thomas the Tank models in the future? Uh, answer to that is no. Um, <laughs> I, 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 well, obviously some some people like to collect Thomas models. Uh, I'm I'm not one of them. I kind of grew out of it and obviously went on to um, you know like what what I have got now, all the modern stuff. Yeah, well, well, you basically real real stuff. But yeah, obviously Thomas did play a big part in uh, my childhood. But um, I have got a Thomas the Tank Engine model. It's quite an interesting model. Uh, it may run at an event or something. Or I might like do because I could do preserved uh, thing on my lair, and I might have like a Thomas Day or something. And I've got like a little Thomas the Tank Engine just just for a laugh to run on there, basically. But uh, no, I don't have any plans to get any Thomas the Tank Engine models in the future, uh, as I would like to get lots of all the Sunset Dorset stuff. Um, what is your favourite food? That be answered in a quick clip now. And the answer is. Mmm, pasta beak. I hope you enjoyed that little funny clip. Um, what inspired you to become a YouTuber yourself? Ah, I missed that one out. That was asked by uh, <laughs> I was asked by uh, one two five out L N E R. See, I knew that sheet would be worth uh, would be um, worth the paper I writ on, doodled on, whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah, as you know, was that one? Uh, there you got Hornby or Batman. That's the fourth question for him. Hornby or Batman? Now. This is always, you know, people always ask this question. I would say I'm more into Batman at the moment. Hornby, I used to, you know, get a lot of Hornby models, but Hornby, you know, sort of lacked the Sunset Dorset stuff recently. Um, and then obviously Batman made it all, and, you know, be really, Batman stepped the game up. And you know, I've been really into Batman stuff, but Hornby do make some brilliant models. I mean, the the new AF that they brought out, although it was like, you know, it's been out for years, but they did new form weathering on it. Outstanding model. So I, you know, and the West Country, uh, rebuilt West Country. Oh my goodness, that's just a brilliant model. So I honestly can't tell between the two. They are both brilliant companies. Um, obviously Hornby are you know, cutting back at the moment, but obviously you know, you've got to do these sort of things to you know, sort of survive this economic climate uh, climate at the moment. But taking the smoke, what start uh, moulding it to the front of a seventy two XX, which you've just spent hours, you know, what hours? I mean. Mubs designing to be super detailed, then you go ruin it, put a moulding thing on the front of it. Hornby does make some silly mistakes sometimes, but I hope that they correct these mistakes. But Hornby do make some good models. I mean, there's 52XX, the 42XX, and the 72XX are really tempting models, but I mean, that smoke box dart, mm, yeah, it looks like a railroad model when you're paying 100 quid for it. And it's got that beautiful cab detail. I mean, I don't see what even made them do that, to be quite honest. But anyway. Can't tell between the two. You know, obviously they get it wrong on some models, but they get it right on quite a lot of other ones. Continuing, um, right. Uh, next question is from British Railways six three six zero one. He said uh, he gave you two questions. One of them was, uh, "What was your first loco, and do I still have her?" And the answer is yes. Uh, my first loco was one of the Hornby O four Os. Um, as I'm sure most people's first uh, loco is. It is a brown liveried loco and it's called Sentinel. Um, if you type it in, type in Hornby Sentinel, it'll probably come up. It's basically like a, the little GWR tank engine like you get in the railroad starter set. It's that type of engine, but it's brown and it says Sentinel in a, on a blue nameplate on the side of it. And um, it stopped running a couple of years ago. But recently I bought it a new chassis and it does work. I still do have her and I'm sure she'll probably feature in a video in the future. But she's hidden in one of my boxes at the moment. I have to try and dig her out. <laughs> so yeah, that's that question. Then uh, again from uh, British Railways 63601 and also joint with um, 379 Electrostar is what are future plans do you have for the layout? Now I presume this is the big uh, loft, the loft layout. Um, well, uh, not much at the moment. Obviously, I've got lots of videos and all that planned, obviously. But detailing-wise, um, I reckon that's about it, you know, because I'm focusing all on Compton Martin at the moment, which there will be updates come in soon, as you've probably seen them all over the weekend. Uh, a bit mislabeled, that one was. But uh, anyway, uh, yes, you know, with all the dates and times and stuff and videos. But yes, um, I'm focusing all the detail on Compton Martin at the moment, but there might be a little bit of scenic things. Like, I might do a bit of ballast in here and there and stuff. Uh, maybe you might use a bit of static grass if there's any left over, but um, not much really. 
Um, but yeah, obviously lots of big videos, all the galas and all that I have planned, and obviously running all the just all the, just running most of my rolling stock is going to be on the primarily on the big layout because Compton Martin is a little layout, and uh, you know setting up on the floor uh, up there is a you know quite hard thing to do. But um, it'll be going to exhibitions, Compton Martin, but the big layout will be main focus for running of locomotives. So yeah, that's that one. Three seven nine electric star also. Um, asked what is my favorite um old classic type of diesel and what is my favorite modern diesel that's two questions combined together now my favorite classic diesel i would pr would probably be well <laughs> i honestly don't know there's so many quirky little um locos uh diesel locos because you know, i'm primarily into steam obviously but I, you know i do have a bit of a you know, I do, don't mind the old classic diesels um i honestly do not know I, I would say at the moment the the teddy bear because it's the class 14 teddy bear because it's quite an interesting loco um yeah so i say the teddy bear for the time being but i'm sure I'll probably as soon as i finish filming i'll go oh no i'll go fast. i like that other diesel but no it's i would say it's the teddy bear because it's just an interesting because it looks like a shunter but actually it's capable of quite high speeds because it was designed as a a mixed goods locomotive it, interesting i didn't know that until recently i thought it was primarily a shunter but no it's a mixed goods uh, loco. That's why I see it going at quite some pace during um, diesel galas. So very interesting that. As for modern uh, diesels, uh, I wouldn't say I really have a modern diesel um, interest. As uh, you know, well, a locomotive I'm primarily interested in. You know, they're all right. You know, I don't mind seeing the old freight engines. But the thing is, you know, when you when you see, stand back, you see a 66 go through a station, you go, oh, 66 sort of thing. But then when you see an old 37 uh, clagging it through a station, you go, yeah, I quite like the 37. But yeah, so any of the old classic diesels, I would say, in modern liveries, I would primi primarily uh, say. But um, I do, I don't mind the you know, like the 66s and stuff. Uh, so they're quite interesting modern diesels, along with the 59s. But then again, that's an old diesel anyway, in a modern livery. So yeah, a bit of a mixture of answers for that question. So yeah, I, I, I honestly don't mind because I'm primarily into steam. But I do have a, I do, I do uh, mind the diesel locos. Anyway. Last question, um, this, this is going back to Matthew Modler's uh, uh, 229, and he said, um, basically he says, what's the future for your YouTube cha channel? Now, I have lots of videos planned, obviously Compton Martin updates, um, galas and events, because I'm going to do documentaries on the layout as well, like a documentary explaining the history of the layout, like the, you know, the made up history of yeah where how the line was constructed and what what route ran on it and stuff and beyond all the periods of locomotive that i have on it and what routes it's supposed to depict obviously it's mostly the sunset of dorset but you know there's gonna be lines connected to it which is why there are some random engines would appear in other videos would explain that um so yeah the documentaries updates on Compton martin galas and events like preserved gala because you know i'm a part of the history of the line was it's going to be preserved as well Obviously, the uh, period events like the Sunset Dorset train spot on the Sunset Dorset. Uh, quite a few videos of that like that will be coming up. Um, you know, just like you know, events like that. Uh, what else? Obviously, days out and trips. If I go to any interesting railways, rail tours, as um, I do like filming rail, rail tours when I can get out and see them. Um, what else? Uh, documentaries. Oh, update on the Cliff Railway. Uh, that's nearly complete. That was running for the first time recently. Um, but sadly I didn't get around to do an update every month like I promised because you know, it's quite a lot of paperwork and stuff but uh, I suppose the next update will actually be it actually working uh, the actual finished product so I'll show a few snaps and a uh, bit of footage about my uh, writing up of the project and maybe a few images of the prototype and then it'll be on to the big main complete railway which is uh, really big it's at least about, well, it's about two metres long so yeah interesting thing because I know I've got a lot of comment feedback on that video people very interested the people that you know don't even uh, aren't really subscribed to the channel because you know they're not really into railways, but they were still interested in this waterpad cliff railway they've commented on there. So hopefully, if you're watching that, there will be an update coming soon. Uh, I don't know when, but it may probably be within the next couple of months because it's got to be finished by then. Uh, well, month or two, uh, or a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, who knows? Uh, so yeah, uh, what else is there? Documentaries, rail tours, days out trips, basically stuff like that. And um, I swear I had another video that I was going to have planned, uh, which I was trying to get across, but I forgot about it. But yeah, the driver's eye videos will probably be back as well when I get around to doing that. And uh, maybe uh, tips and tutorials, maybe. But yeah. So yeah, that's that's about it for this Q&A video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry it's been split into two parts. Um, 
because there were so many questions and obviously I didn't want to like make like a 30 minute long video because one it will take hours to upload and two uh, I'm sure maybe some of you got bored watching that uh, not as if you would but um <laughs> but just me uh, yabbering up against a wallpaper the back wall a white black back wall it's not very interested if I unless I had my model railway maybe running in the front uh, foreground but there we go anyway so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I managed to, uh, I've managed to answer all your questions so yeah I just hope you've enjoyed my uh, one year on YouTube and I've you know the whole the whole channel and everything all my videos and I, I hope you enjoy all the stuff to come so this has been SDJR7F88 speaking and uh, thanks for watching